Hi folks, and welcome to a look at a piece of software called GNU Cache. Now, it's multi-platform, so although we're on Linux here, there are versions for um, Windows and I believe also Mac. And as I've said before in previous videos gone past, um, the UK has typically made things easy for the average person. Uh, things like pay-as-you-earn tax, so we don't have to spend time doing our tax returns unless we're um, owning a business or self-employed or something like that. For the majority of us, um, in the last uh, decades, however many, <laughs> we weren't even taught uh, basic accounts and budgeting at school. That is now changing. Um, the children coming through the UK schools now um, are being taught some of these subjects. Um, I'm not sure if there is a national curriculum, but uh, various schools are doing it from an early age, um, you know, teaching children money and the value of saving and, you know, what it means to put effort behind earning something and then the attachment of spending something that you've put effort behind earning, if you know what I mean. Different schools seem to be doing it in different ways. But anyway, for the majority of us, um, things are relatively straightforward. So long as we can see an account balance, um, that's all we need. But there are various ways in which GNU Cash can help, um, not only from the future, but the historic as well and we're going to take a look at some of those features. Um, for those who... Uh, you can make do without this if you're happy um, to live off um, an, an account balance that you can read on your phone. <laughs> I mean, indeed, um, to some banks' credit, they are actually introducing um, on the accounts um, various views and tools to enable people to um, plan accordingly, do a few bits and pieces, that sort of thing. Um, but we're going to take a look at GNU Cash because I've been using it for the best part of two decades now, I think, somewhere around there. And um, yeah. It's helped me to plan. I mean, it, in some cases, it has been, um, uh, you know, it's enabled me to sail too close to the wind when I know what the future is going to hold. Um, for the most part, I've spent more than I otherwise should have or would have been wise to. Um, and when the unexpected has happened, um, I've been caught with my pants down. And yeah, but it's just like any other tool. It's going to be useful for some people, not so useful for others. And yeah, <laughs> so for most people, when you're start setting up a new account, um, it's relatively straightforward. It's mostly a next next operation. Um, we're not using uh, trading accounts. We typically don't deal with tax or budgeting or business or the rest of that stuff. There is um, a budget in there, budget to be used when none's been specified, but we're just going to go forward for the straightforward accounts. Day threshold for read-only transactions, that's the red line. In most cases for us it's going to be zero because it's straightforward. Um, next our currency is pound sterling, but obviously it's got all sorts in here. Um, the critical thing is to choose the accounts to create. In our case, it's going to be common accounts, and we're English, British, and the accounts in the common accounts uh, consists of current assets, cash in wallet, checking account, savings account. I don't typically use cash in wallet. Um, <clears throat> that is too much detail to keep track of, and indeed these days, cash in wallet is even less <laughs> necessary than others, than it ever was before. Um, so you have equity for opening balances, that's where your opening balances sit. And then you have your expenses. And these are obviously defaults. Um, I recommend that you sit down and have a think about how you want um, to use these accounts. You can move transactions around. 
Um, so don't worry too much about that. Then you've got your income. Any bonuses, gifts received, interest income, other income, your salary, and your liabilities, including a credit card. And the common accounts should do for most of us. And then you just got set up your accounts. Um, you've got placeholders for some. Um, equity and placeholder accounts may have an opening balance. Um, so you, you can have a placeholder for those. Um, liability, blah, blah. So finish your account setup. And that's it. Uh, we're actually going to save this, but we're not actually going to save this. We're going to save this as a demo account too, because I've already got a demo account in there. So we're just going to save um, <coughs> demo account. So you can see what's basically happened. We've got an account tab here, and all those folders exist. Um, the credit card here under this one is under liabilities. I think under my test accounts, I'm actually operating it as a negative asset, but um, that's it's it's nothing serious. The basics of this is what's called double entry bookkeeping, which means that for every action there is an equal um, opposing action. <laughs> And the principle behind double entry bookkeeping, which is God knows how many hundreds, if not thousands of years old, um, it, it's a very old way of doing things, but it works. The fundamentals is that both entries equal. So in the end, when you actually reconcile your accounts, everything should balance to zero. A typical um, example is when you get some salary, um, the other uh, section of that goes into your uh, checking account. So when your um, employer pays you money it goes into your checking account. So you'll notice that the checking account has deposits and withdrawals because you were depositing money in and withdrawing money out. With the salary it is a charge and an income. <laughs> Fundamentally they're just called the other things. So if I put um, uh, employer I can put in a category. Why is it not picking up the category? The transfer. Um, it's supposed to. Oh, this. The, I think this is a different version. So this is going to be income salary. So I should be able to um, type in income salary. And um, I've had. Let's say I've got a thousand pounds in wages. So that is income, um, income salary. Why has it done that? I don't know. Uh, salary account. That's weird. What is it doing? <laughs> uh, checking account should have gone in. Oh yeah, of course. Duh. It's not income salary. Income salary is the account that we're working on. I, I typically work on the other side because I'm typically working on the account itself. So it goes into your uh, checking account. Duh, I'm an idiot. Um, oh, now I've got it the wrong way around. <coughs> I'm typically in the other view, which goes the other way. So I'm typically in the checking account, and it, it it's set up automatically, put it this way. So here we've got in the salary, the employer has, we've got an income of 1,000 and the balance to that is in the checking account. So if we look in the checking account, we've got a deposit of 1,000. Notice that it's on the other side. It's named different things, but it's in the other column. That's typically how it works. <laughs> so we have an income of 1,000 from the employer, and we've got a, it's resulted in 1,000 deposited in my checking account. So that's how this works. If I make an expense, um, I could say, for example, Amazon, out of my checking account, um, this is going to be um, expenses. I'm not used to this set because I've created my own. Uh, this is going to be expenses. Um, where's shopping? <laughs> well, let's just call it groceries for the hell of it. And I've spent uh, £450. Yeah. I've sort of spent money on groceries. It's a withdrawal from the checking account of four hundred and fifty pounds. But in in here, 
um, expenses you can see the groceries has gone 450 pounds expense it's on the other side it's in the other column but it's what's at the top that counts <laughs> so that's basically how it happens everything should balance out so the salary has gone in as an income and a deposit in the checking account the groceries has been an expense and it's been a withdrawal from the checking account so that's how it works I'm now going to open uh, the first set of demo accounts and this is a load of garbage pretty much it's just a load of gen of um, randomly generated numbers <laughs> so it, it doesn't matter too much the key thing is that we've got a lot of data in here to work with and as you can see um, I've actually got the credit card as an asset rather than a liability which is what it should be because I've created the wrong set of accounts for this one <laughs> but um, that's typically uh, something you need, that you need to work for work work or work with me on this <laughs> uh, the principles um, are all sound so in my ca in my case because this is an asset it's actually working in the negative every decrease is working in the negative until it's paid off and then it comes back to zero and in actual fact an actual credit card account you wouldn't pay the monthly amount then you would pay the monthly amount the following month <laughs> you know so uh, bear with me um, I've, 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 I've done this for the sake of doing it if you know what I mean um, so ideally um, you, you've seen how it should be this is just a case of showing you what the thing can do so pretty much every time you make an expense um, most of my expenses are on the credit card um, so if I've gone shopping or something um, this is about four or four four years worth of random generated uh, crap um, you, you say you, you go in and let's say I'm making another um, purchase uh, for fuel so um, you see I'm here I'm in the credit card account I've made a thing for so and its expense is car fuel because it's seen this before and I will make um, an expense it's cost me another 54 pounds 26 pence that's it it has automatically made the appropriate uh, transaction in the other one for me so um, uh, this is a dec decrease of this account so it is an, an expense and in the fuel um, you will exp see expenses, car, fuel you know there it is 5426 it's made the other entry for me automatically um, I can change things around um, like for example if I wanted to merge CD and DVD I could take the transactions I could say um, delete this account and it would say uh, what do you want to do with the transactions and I could either delete them or I could move them to another account and in this case I could move them to DVD so all the transactions in here I could move to DVD and just change the title of that if I wanted to uh, merging them is obviously as you can see a lot easier than separating things out which is a lot harder <laughs> you can um, select a load of um, transactions uh, no you can't I don't think you'd have to there is a way of doing it um, there is a way of selecting tra uh, bulk transactions and moving them uh, stock split no so yeah you can do that but the primary thing there is that you've got your assets and liabilities and you're recording expenses now initially um, this that doesn't seem very useful but we'll come to that you also have um, scheduled transactions and there is a scheduled transaction editor and this what this does is nothing in here at the moment but let's have a look at what I did on the checking account this wage is going in fifth of the second my employer so under the scheduled transactions new scheduled transaction I think I can actually see the checking account as I'm doing it so what you do is I'd call this let, let's say it's wages and I'm going to create automatically and I'm going to create in advance let's say um, what is it 30, 31 days in a month let's say 64 days <coughs> uh, frequency um, it's going to happen monthly the wages go in on the f uh, every f every month 
on the fifth. Um, so you can say you can split things down, and you can also have it by daily, weekly. So any um, any regular transaction you can set up in a stepped basis, and you can have the start date, um, which in which case ours is going to be the fifth of March because we've already got a fifth in there. So we can set up the frequency, um, when it's going to occur, and how often ahead that it is going to occur. And the template transaction. Now I could say this, uh, the template interaction is my employer. I'm just going to put what I've, what I've got in there. And then uh, we need to do the transaction itself, which in this case is going to be um, uh, the uh, income wages is going to be um, debited by 1800 because it is the um, checking account which is going to be credited to 1800 you've got to realize what's going on with with these and if you'll see because we're currently looking at the checking account it is actually the left hand column in this which has the debit which has that that figure so we're going to um, OK that. Uh, kind of, well, we've got to save that. Uh, record the current transaction. So that transaction is now recorded. And that's what will happen. So when I save this and I reopen it, it'll reopen the last set of accounts that you had open. It will go through the schedules and do it. Two transactions automatically created. And they've been created in the checking account. Oh, damn. Have it done. Schedule transactions, template transaction, income wages, current assets, checking account. So that should have gone in. Two changed. Oh, I may, just may need to refresh this page. There we go. There they are. I just needed to refresh the page. Hadn't done anything wrong, just needed to refresh it. Now, as you'll see, there is our blue line. So that is current. That is where we currently stand. Anything this to the south of that is the future. So um, I could put in uh, my rent is going to um, somebody called Mr Noakes. So I could put in future transactions and typically I do put in future transactions to a couple of months. Um, so I can see what's going on um, with various bits and pieces uh, in the account. Um, let's have a look at mine on my other screen. You won't be able to see it, don't worry. Um, let's have a look I have things like um, my council tax comes out um, my wages go in my mortgage goes out uh, my buildings insurance goes out um, my life insurance goes out um, my phone bill is paid monthly um, out of that account so you know I can still still see these sorts of things that are going into and out of your bank account you can get a vision ahead and with that vision ahead you can see roughly um, what you're going to have left over to budget against and also um, the credit card is typically paid um, later on as well so with the credit card being ahead my next one would be on the 25th of the second so if I put 25th, um, 25th of the second let's see in the credit card there's still 260 quid um, owing so on the 25th of the second if I put um, credit card in here um, 267.54 so by having um, a running total in here I know that in the checking account um, actually after the wages are going in that's coming out so I'm not going to have that much to play with so I know what's what I'm going to be responsible for in the future if you know what I mean so that's the kind of thing you've got um, and the credit card you're obviously then just building up a series of transactions against um, against the categories the expense and income categories um, obviously any um, equity opening balances you would put against um, the equity because that would f effectively just be a null thing you've just got to do it if you're putting a new account in here there's there's already going to be an opening balance and the opening balance is going to have to be balanced here um, so that everything still keeps true 
to the uh, to, to the thing like if I was going to start up um, a new account accounts new account if I was just going to start a new test account uh, use the commodity value um, and it was going to be um, an equity account uh, that's going to be the parent account account type if you go to others like expenses you the account type changes um, income uh, income expense income expense or equity or assets if you have an asset it, it changes quite a bit you, you've got all the other stuff you'd expect for a business like liabilities um, stock mutual fund accounts receivable and payable uh, but for most of it it's either going to be a bank um, bank usually so we'll just have this as a test account under assets we must choose a commodity commodity value I'll get it. just call it a cash cash account and, and have that use commodity value one I don't, uh, where did I come in? That's because I screwed stuff up. It's an asset. Um, yeah, current assets. There we go. Must choose commodity. Use commodity value. Oh, currency. Uh, currencies. Let's just cancel it. I think it's because I've been pissing about with it. Um. New account, use commodity value, GB pound sterling, test account. And yeah, that's because I was messing around with it. <coughs> Assets, um, bank, GB pound sterling, that's fine. So there we've got an another bank account in here, test account. And in order to put an opening balance here, uh, let's just say I had um, a, a thousand pounds in here. I would have to balance that and I would put that against opening balances and that is how it would be recorded because the, the that's that's where you sync um, that's where you sync stuff so yeah we've started to get some um, some uh, some data in here so how do we use it well pretty much we've got reports and there are a number of reports that you can put against here uh, an annual summary is one of the reports that I've created <coughs> and as you can see this is um, four years worth of cash flow um, 1st of January 19 to all of 19, all of 20, all of 21 and all of 22 which were would last year so you can see <coughs> everything um, all that we've um, the accounts we've got so we've got all the asset accounts in here and we have income, wages, uh, which obviously is flat, but we can also see um, out of those accounts, because this is a cash flow, we can see where it's gone. So we can see where the other where the other entries have balanced out. So that's how we see how much has gone into fuel, insurance, MOT, tax, rent, and how much we've spent on shopping. Yeah, and we can compare these figures year on year like um, we spent one and a half grand on CDs then again one and a half grand 1700 you know with oh my god that's a lot of money we're spending on CDs better cool that down a bit um, we can see how much it's costing us for MOT uh, how much we're spending on fuel on a yearly basis you know th these kinds of the reports that you can come up with uh, and see <coughs> you can also do the individual um, reports let's say I wanted Amazon how much have I spent with Amazon and I can see um, how much I can see on the subtotals table um, these are all the transactions uh, oh I spent with Music Magpie as well <coughs> CDs and the rest of it let's have a look at this report uh, options uh, Amazon report filter oh I've also got music under here we'll come back to that uh, we'll come back to this but if I get rid of that uh, we'll cut that you'll see that this now has only Amazon um, in it and that's how much has been spent with Amazon uh, all the detailed transactions and you'll see that it's got a split down of what subcategories have been spent on so um, that can be useful information um, and the transaction report editor is pretty much uh, what we've got here I'm just going to uh, put that back in 
and we're going to report this is a transaction report so that's that's what we're doing we've got our accounts and the, we've got the options now we're just going to go back to this report because I've renamed it basically and we're going to have a look at the options this being a transaction report we're going through all the expenses so I clicked on expenses and selected all the children because I want to know um, anything that I've spent with Amazon in any function in any function at all you can obviously cut things down if you want um, but that's how you do that you select um, select the account and then select all the children the currency you typically won't deal with but the display um, is an interesting one um, one transaction per line one split per line um, other account name what you want to show yeah, you see what you want to show under here filter is also an interesting one because you can filter by the account name <laughs> um, but of most um, use you will find the transaction filter and we're using regular expressions uh, for the transaction filter and this um, pipe symbol which you'll typically find to the left of the Z on most keyboards on most UK American keyboards is an OR so as you can see we're picking up on transactions with both Amazon and music in them where did it go where did it go it went there <laughs> so that's how we're doing this reconcile status we're showing all um, we haven't actually reconciled anything here but you can um, sh just show the ones that you've reconciled we'll show reconciliation in a minute um, void transactions closing transactions but that that will enable you to filter out so by a combination of accounts and filter you can bring in the transactions that you want to know so this now isn't fun functionality and and, um, and you can have multiple ors uh, who else have we got in in, in this lot um, yeah for uh, yeah general we have the report name the start date which in the, in our case is the whole thing and the end of accounting period um, so yeah you could have end of this year as well you could have end of uh, start of current year and end of um, start of this month you can do it on a monthly basis uh, quarterly basis or a yearly basis or accounting period whenever your accounting period is set to start or finish in this case we've got all transactions because this is now broken down by sorting <coughs> sorting is where a lot of this happens our primary date our primary key is by date you could have it by account name and you'll see how that changes we now have book CD and DVD by account name <laughs> and if we have the second one of date that should then break down by year so you can see how we've basically turned it on its head <laughs> and by annually there you go we've sort of turned this on our head on its head so the sorting is a very powerful field so now we have book CDs or DVDs that we've spent um, with Amazon or Music Magpie um, over the years uh, for the various period and then you've got the totals and average so how you do this is an interesting one there's also show subtitles only which will hide the transactional detail and will give you just the summary so that's there and if we just um, change this back to as it was um, a date account name and yeah, that was primary subtotal annually apply there we go we could actually go quarterly and it would break it down by quarters <coughs> or monthly so you can see if there's uh, any trends when in some periods of the year you're spending more money on enter home entertainment than others you know th these kinds of things or even fuel if there's a particular time of the year that you are actually um, spending more fuel than others you know these are the kinds of things that you can get out of these reports it just takes a bit of um, uh, of, of selection with the accounts to see what accounts you want to see and um, the filter see if you want to cut it down and your sorting and um, so how you want it to be arranged and displayed so that's the transaction report 
Um, I'm not going to save that one. Uh, annual summary um, is an interesting one because this is actually running off a multi-column and in this case we have uh, four cash flows, four individual cash flows. We're just going to show um, the cash flow uh, for example. I'm going to make a new report um, income and expense cash flow. So we're going to, ch there's the bog standard one um, and we have options up here some of them they have them down here there if it's a uh, multiple so we can select the accounts in this case it's gone for all the assets um, I don't think we can actually do a cash flow on on some of the others but um, there's the cash flow um, general which is your start date startup counting period uh, we could do the start of January 2019 Duh, I clicked off uh, that applies, so you can see everything there. Um, the primary reports. Um, where is it? Closest to report date. Yeah, um, so you can see it by. Um, so that's where it comes in. This would be December. Duh. So that would be where we would set. Now we've got a particular year. So you could see the cash flow for everything if you wanted, but you'd, it's more useful when you break it down to the year. Or we could have um, the start of this year and the end of this year. And you can also do the start and end of the previous year, so you could compare this year to the, to the last one. So there we've got the cash flow of what's going on. Um, so let's have a look. We have um, multi-column custom multi-column port. There is a dashboard I think and the dashboard is, is is an interesting one. That's where you edit the options for this. Income expense chart styles um, uh, step size one year and if we jam that down to the start of 2019 and the end of the current year end of the current year, end of this year, that's it and we've got the step size of one year. So you can start seeing that there's charts in here as well. It's not straightforward, just um, uh, just figures. You can get some charts out if you want, although it's a bit uh, bit odd, but weighted action, average of all transactions in the past. So you can show um, the table if you want, display a table of the selected data, so you can see it. It's quite powerful um, in here, and you've got the accounts of everything that's been um, spent, so you could actually have, um, yeah, it's a it's a it's an income expense um, report rather than um, an asset report. You just got to make sure you're choosing the, the 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 one that you need for. So in we'll just close that one. Um, in the multi-column report, uh, custom multi-column report, you've then got a multi-column view, and under the options. Um, you can select how many columns you want and the various reports that are there from it. So you see you've got an income statement, income pie chart. Um, is there a cash flow bar chart? Yeah, so we've got a cash flow bar chart. Uh, I think I've asked for three of them. So there are our three bar charts. Um, should be. Uh, yep, there they are. So edit the options. Um, uh, one year. And this this doesn't th theoretically make sense. Uh, so we're going to January uh, 2020 to um, December 2020. Uh, can we actually make that larger? Uh, there must be a way to make that larger. Uh, then we can edit the options of this one. Display one year. Uh, when did I do the other one? Um, 2021 to 31st, 21. Then we have the next one. Uh, which is January 20, 
to There we are. Um, how we edit the how we edit that rows columns one. <sighs> how we alter that? I'm not sure. Reload. No. Um, perhaps I'm asking for something that it doesn't usually do. <laughs> yeah, um, typically the, oh yeah, I forgot to edit that, change that to here. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably post in the, um, in the thing to find out how I would, um, actually change this. Can I grab that? No. Duh. Oh well. <sighs> yeah, what it'd probably be is columns so options. Number of columns one and then it would appear down like that. And you could then drill into the single report if you wanted to. Back. So there's quite a few reporting options. Um, obviously, uh, to get these kinds of data, it does require you to put in quite a bit of effort uh, over a number of years in order to in order to get the figures in in order to report back. I mean, obviously, once you've got a year's worth of figures, um, you can get something useful like the cash flow for the year, which will give you an idea of what what you're spending on what, um, and that can be useful. You know, so a, a current um, cash flow, you know, always keeping an eye on the cash flow can be very useful. It does take a bit of time um, to go through and work out what your expenses categories are going to be. And you, you can never typically get everything down. Um, you can split reports, uh, sorry, transactions. So let's say, um, let's kill the annual summary. Uh, let's kill the field because that doesn't make sense. Um, let's say I've got a something here to Lidl's and I'd out of that I'd spent 50 quid on tools. Um, let's put an expense um, an expense uh, new account equipment uh, uh, let's call it household and let's make another one under there called tools and th th this is what I'm saying it takes a bit of time to work things out um, groceries uh, yeah um, that was Littles so I'll um, jump to the other account so this is the where it goes out of the credit card account rather than the other one and I should be able to split transaction so you can see um, that I, I've got expenses groceries in there I can have expenses, household tools in there. I can put 50 in there. Will it do it automatically? No, it doesn't. Um, so that would then I'd take 50 off there, which would be, what is it, 63, 66, 66, yeah. And that has then split that transaction. Uh, as you can see, it's just sorted it out. Um, and then um, under groceries, you can see that this is now split transaction, 63.96. And under the accounts of tools, um, household tools, duh. expand that out. We've now got fifty pounds, and it's recording as a split transaction. And if you need to find out, you can just jump to the other account where you can see because it's already there, duh. Uh, where it is. Credit card, duh. If I come off this and go into tools, and then say jump to the other account, that should. Uh, where did I have it? Split transaction. Huh? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm having to go into it to, to find out where it is. That's interesting. When it, when it jumped to the other account, it couldn't work it out where it was. 
I'll, I think I'll report that. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty powerful. Um, th there is no doubt that using this kind of thing takes a bit more time. So when it comes to reconciling, um, to reconcile the account um, means when you get the spreadsheet, when you get the accounts in, uh, when you actually get your statement, your bank statement in, you then reconcile the account. So let's say um, my bank statement comes in and it's it's got these accounts listed, it's got these transactions listed, um, but it's got an account. It's you know, so I want to um, actions reconcile accounts so when you reconcile an account it asks you what the ending balance should be in our case we're going to make we're going to make it 44 60 um, 13 and you can see what's going on we've now got the that if you see in the top in the bottom right it's uh, showing the difference yeah so as it is we've got these transactions and those transactions have resulted in a difference of zero so one has balanced with the other to create uh, the ending balance that we expected. If our balance doesn't match, then obviously we've got a problem with some of these transactions. Maybe we've done a typo, or maybe we have, um, um, maybe we got it wrong, uh, we didn't remember, or let's say, oh damn, I didn't put it. How much does I spend in Sainsbury's? Oh, about 50 quid. Uh, thereabouts. So we'll put fifty pound in as a placeholder, and when the account comes in with the exact details on it, we can then um, we can then edit it. And this, if you double click on one, it will go to the um, to the um, to the one that we've got the problem with. So then you can finish the reconcile, and you will notice in the R column there is now a Y to notice that we have actually done due diligence and we've checked these uh, we've checked these transactions are actually true and that the bank account matches what we say it matches. And we would obviously do that with the credit card, card account statement when it came in as well. And um, that's about it. Uh, that's, that's what it can mean for the average person um, with a relatively straightforward, um, relatively straightforward um, account you can just put the regular transactions in and the, the, the scheduled account uh, the scheduled transactions are, could, don't have to just go against that uh, if you've got a, a regular um, thing that you're putting against the, that you're paying with the credit card it's coming off your credit card you can put that in as well so that's there the power um, for this for me is all in the reporting um, it's worth it for me to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, there is something about the reports. Um, if you've got a report um, and you want to save it and you want to change it, like I've got here, I could put this as um, actually uh, entertainment. I change the options to um, entertainment report or entertainment report. Apply that. Once that's applied, I would save config as rather than save config. So I've saved that one now. Entertainment report, that's done. So now I can go back to the actual Amazon report, <laughs> edit the options, take that out of the filter. <laughs> now that that is just an Amazon report, and save the config over the original Amazon report. So now I've got both reports in there, and reports, save reports configuration, I have the entertainment report, which gives me including music magpie. So those options are pretty powerful. Um, the reporting is typically what gives me um, the power to see where I've spent my money and adjust my behavior based on what I've spent, and to spot trends. And these are not only useful um, where it's been, but they're also useful to budget for the future. So I can think, oh heck, you know, my experience, my, my fuel expenses are going up a bit. I'd, I'd better put a bit, put a bit more money aside for fuel in the future. And um, and uh, it, it gives you that look ahead, 
if you know what I mean. Um, a number of people are turning over to a, an old-fashioned method of budgeting, which is envelope budgeting. Um, it's useful, but it, it involves stuffing wadges of cash into envelopes. <laughs> um, <coughs> it is very useful um, because a part of your income you're putting uh, you're putting aside into envelopes so that you can't spend it on anything else. It's not in your purse to spend, but um, having cash hanging around um, is uh, it is a bit dangerous. Um, so yeah, envelope budgeting is it's useful, but you know you've got your cash laying around the house. <laughs> Whereas something like this, um, so long as you've got the the willpower not to spend it, um, the money stays. In your bank account and it does give you a bit of flexibility um, you can see the trends you can see what you've done in the past it can alert you to changing behavior um, oh my god I've spent far too much on CDs gotta cut that down um, but it can also help you budget hmm I'm spending I'm spending so much on fuel I better make sure I keep that that kind of money in the account um, so it can be useful um, it's got its good points it's got its bad points it won't be the ideal solution for everyone but there you go <laughs> it is what it is so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, look at Canoe Cash they can obviously do far far more um, than I'm showing you here um, and there is a reasonable community for help if you need it um, but I found that with these basic reports um, just twiddling around with what's reporting and learning what the report can give me has been very useful um, so yeah there you go that's a quick look at GNU cash for you take care ciao for now